Thank you for indulging the present moment so deeply. Thank you for getting lost in the wonder of this life, for choosing curiosity over aversion and love over fear. I'm fascinated by the vastness of our inner worlds. Anytime I feel distant from the safety of my own, I know that my soul is aching for that deep intimacy with itself again. And it's not life that's exhausting me, but it's having surface level conversations or spending more time in the level of the thinking mind rather than the feeling body. I light a candle or take a walk or sit on the earth and breathe until I feel at home again. I remember that sometimes letting go can be as easy as exhaling. Thank you for exhaling with me and letting each story, each expectation, and obligation fade away long enough for you to feel like you again. Let's continue to meet each other in this space. I wanted to share a few of the things that I do to keep my channel clear. You can feel so disconnected from who you really are and when you go out into the world with that feeling, everything just feels a little bit more rocky and unstable and you are way more susceptible to other energies coming into your sphere that you aren't inviting. And when you have that sense of connection to yourself and to your truth, you can walk around the world fully embodied, being a pillar of light everywhere you go because you know who you really are and you can shine that light and love and essence out to everyone way more than you are letting other people's energy kind of come at you. And basically these are just some things that you can do to keep your channel clear, to hear your intuition, and to live in your knowing. And I love this idea of knowing because it's just feeling connected to the truest essence of who you really are and living from that place of centeredness in your spirit and in your truth. That's how I wish to live every single day and every single moment in my highest integrity and my highest alignment. And the first one is spending time in nature and experiencing the elements and taking those deep breaths into your diaphragm and having a moment of complete stillness and solitude where you let all the stories go, even with a million different things to do and your world that seems to be falling apart in the moment that you can breathe and you can remember that you're loved, that you are actually safe and giving yourself over to that experience, even for a little bit. And I have been trying to make it a goal every day to give myself the experience of feeling fully worthy in every single aspect of my reality and it really is a challenge for me to do this and so every single day I try to spend at least 10 minutes where I let myself feel fully worthy and any thoughts that come up that are in dissonance with that I just let them fade away and I ignore them and I usually like to stand in the sun and inhale my arms up and exhale my arms down and I let myself feel beautiful and worthy and free and primal and I make that into a practice and even 10 minutes of releasing story and conditioning is so huge healing in such a beautiful, powerful way to reclaim yourself and it's definitely a priority, especially doing it first thing in the morning. It just really sets the tone for your whole day. If you can get out in nature, you know, when you're feeling your energy become stagnant and you don't like who you are, just run, run to the forest if you can. And the next one I have on here is deep breaths in all caps <laughs> in my journal, because this is scientifically proven that extending your exhale activates the parasympathetic nervous system and will take you out of a fight or flight state. And I also like to call shallow breathing hamster sized breaths because it's just breathing into the chest in these very short little snippets and it is often how we breathe when we have anxiety. It is really bad for our digestion and for our pelvic floor and for our bodies as a whole. We're not getting as oxygenated as we could if we we're breathing into the diaphragm. So shallow breathing really is something that can feed into those low moments that you may be having and making them even worse. Once your body is relaxed and it's so much easier for your mind to be relaxed, oftentimes we try to solve our problems that were born at the level of the mind with the mind. So we let our mind spiral into anxiety and then we try to solve it from that anxiety ridden place when it's not the most helpful. It's so much easier to use the body and to change your energetic state and to extend your breath. And then it's so much easier for the thoughts to slow down and follow suit. And my yoga teacher would always say, if your body is moving, then your mind is moving. If your body is still, your mind is much more likely to be still. So prioritizing that stillness and those deep, long breaths is just a recipe for success and is one of the main things that helps me end my anxiety. Any moment that I start to feel that anxiety, 
straighten my spine, roll my shoulders back, open my chest, and simply having the intention of extending my exhale and just sitting there until my breath feels long and deep and nourishing. I just, the anxiety is gone. And that's, it's, it's as simple as that, which is really, really wild because I struggled with anxiety for so much of my life. And to realize that, oh, all I have to do is, is sit with it and sit still when I want to run and race around and feed into it. I guess that makes a lot of sense. So that is really, really important. And after you have, you know, calmed down your anxiety or lengthened your breath, this could be a great time to add in prayer. And I hope prayer isn't too much of a trigger word for some people, but prayer to me means just communicating to my spirits and guides or ancestors and really casting spells with my words intentionally. And something my mom would always say when I was younger is that there are so many angels in the sky who want to come down and help humans, but they won't help us unless we ask. And so many humans forget to ask or don't realize that they can ask for help or for guidance. And so I always just remember that. And now in my day-to-day -day life, usually at night, I will call upon my angels and guides and ask them for assistance in any way that that I need and thank them for protecting me and guiding my journey and just really speaking out. This can also be a really great form of manifestation as well as writing things down. Just any way that you can take your prayers or intentions or visions or gratitude out of just your mind and putting them into this third dimensional realm. I love to pray before every single meal and that really has become such a ritual for me that it's so easy for me to pray three times a day and to drop into the moment and every time I pray I am straightening my spine and deepening my breath and expressing gratitude and envisioning a world where all people can eat nourishing food and all people feel safe and have access to the resources that they need. Having it be a food ritual also just makes me way more present with my food and with my tummy and my body and that's a really great anchor but you can also, anytime that you see the moon, remember to pray and just be like, oh yeah, let me just talk to the moon really quick. And it's kind of like a childlike, very innocent state because I think when we're younger, we can see that spirit lives in all things and we have such a wild imagination that everything around us is our friends. You know, that tree in your backyard is your best friend and you just talk to it and it just makes you feel less alone. And I really think that everything around us is an extension of us and a reflection of us, especially in nature just that pure frequency and so speaking out to it is just a way to be in communion with nature and to access that spiritual realm so i love to pray out loud to the trees to the moon to my journal and to my food and it's one of the easiest ways to remember that there's a whole other world that's unseen that's energetic that you can talk to and feel and experience consuming high vibrational whole foods eating foods that are as close to their natural state as possible and especially when you do feel stagnant energy or that your digestion isn't good or that you feel bloated all the time really tuning into your body and what it needs and making food into a ritual and filling yourself with things that you know make your body feel really good, that digest easily, that make you have energy, make your skin glow, really just focusing on those. And I'm gonna repeat a quote that I love to say anytime I'm talking about healing through food and that is to consume food as your medicine so that you don't have to consume medicine as your food. It can be a way to show yourself how much you love yourself and how kind you can be to yourself and it definitely was another one of my anchors whenever I was feeling anxious I would binge eat in the past and then when I started to rewrite that when I was anxious I would fill myself with the lightest most nourishing foods because when I'm anxious and I'm eating it usually makes me feel really heavy I feel like I'm feeding that anxiety so if I was hungry and anxious I would just make myself a delicious nourishing soup or salad or just sandwich of some sort or macro bowl and anchor in love and nurturing into that moment from myself and it just became kind of a healing ritual and that's where for me I really felt like I started to heal through food like using it as a way to show myself love and nourish myself fully and nurture myself and be you know a friend to this physical body and so I highly highly recommend it and I do think that our digestion can be a reflection of our energetic state and our stool can say a lot about us so if you're ever curious you can look up what your stool means if it's like looking funky or something you can literally look it up on google and just 
maybe get some insight into what's going on <laughs> internally. Affirmations and reclaiming the divine beauty, love, and sovereignty that is your birthright. Affirmations were something that for me were definitely born out of necessity when most of my thoughts were extremely negative and harmful and just very unkind toward myself. I wrote down a list of all the really negative things that I believe about myself and on the page next to it I wrote the positive affirmation to go with that so anytime I would have a negative thought about my worth I would just read you are worthy in every single way and speak that out or think it you know to rewrite that old deeply ingrained thought pattern and little by little I was able to release those negative limiting beliefs and one of my main limiting beliefs was that I wasn't going to be safe or protected and so what I did what I wrote next to that was I am loved therefore I am safe and this one really really resonated with me and brought me back to a energetic space of truth and knowing because even when I feel extremely low when I feel ugly and gross and unworthy and uncapable when I breathe into my heart and feel the expansive amount of love and compassion that I have to share with the world I instantly I can look into myself and be like no I am meant to be here I, I can serve a purpose I do have something to offer and if at the very least it's my love then that is enough and that love will keep me safe and so when I had just moved to New York and I was really struggling with depression and financial stuff I would just remind myself I am loved therefore I am safe and that was just such a powerful anchor and that love in my heart was probably the only thing that I actually liked about myself was my ability to want to do good and it was the only thing that I felt like gave me worth and that was enough you know to, to keep me going and now I use affirmations especially on those days where I feel low or I don't like the way that I look in the mirror and I remind myself that I am so much more than just this physical body and they're kind of like light codes for yourself you know perfectly channeled affirmations just for the healing that you need within you. I, anytime that I do feel bad about my body, I really do have to remind myself that those thoughts and allowing myself to feel constricted in my energy because of my external appearance is doing a disservice to spirit and I almost have to remind myself how much greater I am than just this physical vessel and how expansive my energy is and how worthy it is of being shared and being danced with despite what I look like which is ever-changing and that you know feeling down about my physical appearance is just another form of attachment that is binding me to this third dimensional realm that I am only half a part of you know I have had so many lessons and reminders in my life not to let what this physical body looks like constrict my expansive energetic self and a really big kind of season of my life where I was working through this was when I was breaking out really really badly and I learned to walk into any room with confidence and breathe into my heart and feel that infinite just pool of love within me and genuine compassion for all beings which is the only thing that I truly feel really connected to like and that I actually really love about myself is my ability to share love and compassion and so I would breathe into that one area of pure confidence and walk into a room connected to my heart and know that that alone makes me worthy the amount of love that I can share and reflect back to people and so I would have heart-based conversations and remember that I am not just this physical body and feel that potent gift that I have to share with people and it completely it just made me feel so confident no matter what I looked like and I would also look in the mirror and just affirm myself and thank my skin even though it was breaking out attachments and expectations are what really cause us to suffer especially when it comes to our physical appearance we have an expectation of what we're supposed to look like and if you can release that you can really just honor the phase that you're in like yeah I really am cleansing and purifying so much right now and it's showing up on my skin and that's beautiful because it's a testament to the work that I'm doing to love myself and to reclaim my sovereignty and to allow myself to feel safe in this world so I fully honor the fact that I'm breaking out right now. Everything can be a doorway and especially those kind of areas of sensitivity and those areas of insecurity, those can all be a doorway to teach you the lessons that you need to learn to move forward in this life with a full cup, with full knowing and confidence and pretty much everything that I practice now are tools that I really had to learn because I had no other option. 
absorbing inspiring media and curating your social media platforms to be full of accounts that uplift you and that give you good feelings in your body and that show you different body types and different backgrounds, you know, a diverse, accepting, just inclusive social media feed will honestly do you good because we are constantly getting programmed by everything around us, by ads and billboards and commercials and news articles. And I think that our social media feeds are one way that we can kind of curate that programming that happens and we can choose to unfollow accounts that make us feel bad about ourselves and follow accounts that make us feel good and inspired and so absorbing inspiring media is just a way to broaden your world view to see more love and light and acceptance it's like what do i do with all of this information how do i integrate it we are leaking prana from all of our five senses from the day that we're born and we're leaking it from our eyes and from our ears and from our mouths when we're speaking and from our tummies when we're eating and i can visibly feel that experience in my body when i'm on social media too long it's like my energy is just going everywhere outside of my body and not being contained within me. Little thing that you can change. And also along with that is a community that reflects your highest self. Having at least a few homies who you can drop in so deeply spiritually with and meditate with. And for me, when I think about what I am seeking in any connections in my life, it's just to evolve consciously. That is the most worthwhile thing I think I can do with any of my friends is to help them witness what's going on, remind them of their highest self. And maybe you can chant mantras with them, which is another way to clear your channel. So mantra means mind tool. And I personally like to do kirtan a lot and just chant Sanskrit mantras. And it's just something that drops you out of your head and into your body. I think everyone's voice is the perfect frequency to heal their own nervous system and relax their own physiology. And so I will sing out loud. I think singing also helps you to extend your exhale and activate the parasympathetic nervous system because you're using the full length of your exhale when you're singing. I also like to listen to healing frequencies and sound waves. Those are the things that I do to keep my energetic channel feeling clear and that allow me to feel connected to myself and prevent that ickiness from arising. I hope that this video maybe gave you some tips that you might want to add to your journal or practice and I think it is really special to write these things down and I always mention this but we are so hard on ourselves and when we are procrastinating or when we're unhappy or when we feel stagnant or anxious we can get really angry and upset with ourselves like what's wrong with me why am I procrastinating or why am I feeling anxious I thought I was overcoming this and in reality it's like well let me actually just think about why I'm feeling anxious for the third day in a row. Oh, because I've been neglecting this huge area of my life or maybe I'm feeling stagnant because I'm procrastinating and it's actually, there's nothing wrong with me. It's just alchemy, you know? I've just been on my phone too much. I've been inside too much. I've been neglecting myself too much. And once you can just tune into that and listen, then it just becomes easier and easier to, in those moments, instead of being mean to yourself, just really reflect on what you did that day, what you ate, the kind of conversations you had. And then it's so much easier to realize, oh, that's why I'm drained. Like, it's not even just me. I'm just here witnessing and playing around with all these alchemies and I can so easily make myself and my body feel safe again and my energy feel safe again and I guess that's what ritual is for you know to kind of attune you back into yourself and I guess this is a reminder to be kind to yourselves and be more curious than fearful of those denser murky areas within you so thank you so much for watching and joining me today I genuinely appreciate you so deeply and I will see you in a video soon Bye.